There's that old adage, those who can't do, teach. You know what? It's a total lie. This week, we're in the historic Third Ward at the Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design to see the 2014 Mayad Faculty Show. School is in session. Let's go look at this. Full disclosure, Mayad is one of the places where I teach art history, but my work is observational, seeing what artists have been up to past and present. This is more like a view from the trenches, the work produced by artists with independent practices in their own right, but who also work with students to find their own creative path. The exhibition is voluntary, one in which faculty might choose to be included. Those that have work on view show a great range of approaches from multiple disciplines and all types of material. Some of the artists on view are instructors in multidisciplinary means. Eric Vogel recently collaborated with John C. Eastberg on a monumental, authoritative book on the life of Frederick Layton, for whom one of the Mayad galleries is named. This installation is not so much about the visuals, but about the compiling of history into finished, lasting work. It's complemented by video interviews about Layton and his legacy, and excerpts from the book. Also using video is James Barani, who also enjoys a career as an opera singer. He's done multimedia works in the past, and here this array is drawn out on the wall like a schematic diagram of a project. The printed material is beautiful in its delicacy and nuanced finishes, such as text that reads, disaster has struck close to you, which point to dramatic tension. The best part is the video. I wish it was larger, but its small size does make you look more closely. The video is a fast motion of drawings happening before our eyes, bringing the artist's studio into the gallery space. Some of the strongest installations reveal wonderful complexities in the use of material. Rena Yoon especially stands out for her combinations of textiles, woven elements, and elegant printed forms. It's almost like calligraphy in the flowing quality of the contour lines, and the textile elements inserted like very shallow reliefs. The contrast between softness and strength is echoed in the colors, neutral black and white offset by rich red. You know we've all doodled with a Sharpie marker at some point. John Feldhausen takes this to an exceptional form of craft with these masks, dense and richly textured, but only up close can you get a sense of the source of the mark-making process. As this is a group show, there isn't a single unifying theme, but some artists hint at disaster in a rather playful manner, like Melissa Wagner Lawler's In the Event of Moon Disaster, or Colin Mathis' clever flood-resistant paintings mounted on swimming noodles. Paul Mitchell's exquisite pieces combine photography and printing process to make images that evoke the traditions of street photography and desolate, modern, but distant drawings. The art of drawing is certainly not dead, but takes on the possibilities offered by modern technology, as seen in Chris Bitow's fantastic series made with Adobe Illustrator software. They're completely charming, joyful, adorable, and subversive rascals. Teaching art is not an easy thing, but this exhibition offers a look at how these artists are exploring interesting approaches in their projects and in their own work. They're role models for students, and for us as the general public, a model of how the professional and academic worlds can richly combine. Thanks for spending some time here at Mayad. See you next week when we'll look at something else. <laughs>